right. Good? All right. We got Felicia O. Felicia O, Felicia O, Felicia O. Jen Jock <laughs> Machado, black belt. One of the first uh, female Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts in the world. Yeah. Uh, one of the top competitors. And I've always, like, you know, big, been, a, been a fan. I've been, a, you know, I've known you kind of, I think, since you started jiu-jitsu, right? In a way. Well, when you, once you started becoming a world-class competitor. But I didn't really, really meet you until that day in the acai place. Right, right. That's so that, I've been, I've been, I've been. But seeing, we've seen, yeah, right, tournaments, tournaments yeah. for a lot of years. Yeah, I remember you were at the was it two thousand Grappler's Quest in Vegas. It was like the first was it one. Two thousand? No, it was like two thousand three. Two thousand okay. Two or three? I, 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 think. I forget. Okay. Yeah, it happens to all of us. <laughs> but because uh, I, I didn't start till the end of two thousand. Okay. November. Okay, yeah. so it was at the beginning. Yeah. Two thousands. Yeah. Yeah crazy but uh but uh yeah you started later in life 33 so 33 okay yeah. i mean at that time it was really late right right that's yeah. you know it's, it's not that's not that late right now but no, back no. then it was you know it's like kid these bunch of kids right so uh but you got became you rose up really fast you know why do you think that is i like training i trained a lot how I, often did you train well you know when i started Sure, you had a great, you know, master like professor, you know, master yes, Jean Jacques yes. Machado. Yeah, Jean Jacques was for great. Sure. But I, I think it's funny because people tend to think that when I started jujitsu, because I progressed so quickly that I, like the first time I got on the mat, it was like, oh my gosh, I found my sport. It wasn't like that at mm. all. I did a lot of sports growing up, mm. and I what, was. What sports did you do? Um, the one that I loved the most, but I was, I mean, I wasn't very good at any of them, but I, I loved gymnastics the most, but I also played basketball. Um, actually, in college, I played a year of intramural football. Um, I couldn't do things with sticks mm. that disconnected you. So okay. baseball, hockey, those things I couldn't do, but things I could touch the ball, uh, like football or basketball, I, I, I like those things. Um, which is interesting because like with jujitsu, it's like you have to touch the person. Right, right. Where then wrestling, you're a little removed, mm. where I'm not as good. And then boxing, like where you're completely removed, mm. oh, it's just <laughs> bad. Right, so it's a similar connection so wh to things. Why did you like g gymnastics? What what did that do for you? Um, well, it got my back injured. <laughs> Great. Um, <laughs> thinking back, I think... The good things, right? The yeah. good things. <laughs> the, the things that last and stay with you forever. Uh, you know, I think looking back, it is very similar to jujitsu in the mm -hmm. sense that it's very solitary in the sense. And there's a lot of... Rep repetitive practice in terms of like rolling and or you know just practicing drilling. moves and drilling and there's no big carrot at the end it's just I think I learned how to just practice a lot and do what I love doing and what I enjoyed how to learn even though that it wasn't there was no great thing I, you know certainly I was like wow at, at my time growing up it was Nadia was the the big um G gymnastics mm. figure and watching her and how serious she was and how focused and and I think I kind of took that from that time and I always wondered what did this give me besides a bad back and later years later now I look back and I go you know like I learned a lot of that discipline and all those things but truly when I started jujitsu it was everything I feared I had he heard about it from my friend. He explained to me it's fighting. There's no kicking or hitting, and I had no idea what that would look like. Mm. Eventually, I went to watch a class. Why did you? What, what, what drew you to, to do a jiu-jitsu class? Well, I, you I, had I went the on friend. A, you had the friend. I had a friend who I used to rock climb with, and then okay. her husband was the one. And we went on a bad hiking trip. So then I was like, okay, well, let me check this out because it's indoors, and it's something different that I've never done. Uh -huh. And truly, it was everything that I feared. It was the close contact, someone sweating, someone touching my neck and trying mm. to choke me e everything that I was uncomfortable with. And I just went to a class and it was like, okay, okay I guess I'll sign up. It wasn't, no, I don't want to do that. And it wasn't, oh my gosh, this is great. It was just like, oh, okay, I'll sign up. And, and it, you know, you, they had the, the form to fill out and mm. then it says, do you want to get your black belt earn your black belt? Mm. And I was thinking, of course, Right, like Drop yes, the seed, huh? like, you think but, it's like a stupid question on the form. Well, yeah, it's a stupid question, but it's also like, what did I know about martial arts? I knew Bruce Lee and karate, mm. kung fu. I knew about it. I never really did much. I did like mm. three weeks of karate once, you know. But, 
But growing up with martial arts, of course you want a black belt. What are you going to say? Like, I'm going to train and not want a black belt? Mm. Of course. So, you know, you kind of think that that's the, what the goal is in everything mm. in martial arts. Mm -hmm. and, and then, uh, so then I signed up and it was a year commitment. Okay. And then I took, there were two different teachers. Silverado was the other teacher. And when I first started, I didn't know anything. And so I went to Jean-Jacques' class and beginning class. And then I went to Silverado's class. So I tried them both in it the beginning you don't know anything so i didn't feel like i was getting a workout in jean jacques class in silverado's class at the end he'd go around we'd circle up mm -hmm. and each person would say an exercise and then we would do 20 reps of whatever that was so then i felt like i got a workout so i started going to silverado's class first okay and then it was two days a week and i thought well i've signed up i paid for this i'm just going to go these two days a week because I, why wouldn't i mm -hmm. so um, in my mind, it was just a regular part of my schedule of something I do, a class I take. So there, there was really never a point in jujitsu where I was like, oh, I'm not going to go because I don't feel like it. Or I didn't go f for a long period of time later because I was injured. Right. But, you know, people sign up and then they don't show up for a long time. We know, you know, when you have right, an academy right. or as a higher belt, you see people come in and, and people... Say, you know, they'll go home after work and then they'll sit down. And I tell people, put your stuff in your car. I don't care if you have two or three hours to kill. Don't go home because once you sit down on that couch, you're not mm. going to get back up. Mm. Um, bring your snack, bring whatever. And now, especially with phones, you know, you can sit in your car yeah. for two hours and kill it pretty quickly on Instagram or social media or, or doing yeah. emails or whatever it is. So, so you never missed? No, I just went as a regular part of my schedule. I was like, school, like. Oh, a job at school yeah so then i just went twice a week and then after six months i did my first tournament and um just continued and then i think as a blue belt i went to pan ams in florida mm, and Orlando. i and i fought kira gracie in the semi-final no idea who she was no idea who my referee was who was pejapano <laughs> and um i lost that match I haven't watched the video ever since, but I think from what I heard, there was a little, maybe, maybe I won that match. I don't oh, know. Oh, okay, okay. So you did I, good. It was a good well, match. I, I, yeah, but I think there was an issue with the, the, the points. Scoring. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> I mean, I was. It's Kerr Gracie, it, come on. It was Kerr Gracie. I was a nobody blue belt out of sure, nowhere. Sure. And, um, and so that's 2004. Three, four? That when was, was 2002. It? 2002, okay. Or, yeah, that was the beginning of 2000. Okay, that was my black belt debut. Mm -hmm. Ah. I got to go against Kleber that year. And how did that? You know, I won. You know, I'd been, you know, you know, you know Kleber. But he had been around. He'd been around for, he's a yeah, legend, you know. Yeah. So to go against him was really cool. That's awesome. I had gone against Draculino, Marcio Fritos, all these guys that are, you know, I'd, you know, looked But up you already to. knew all of them. Knew, knew Kleber? No, no. All the Brazilians. Well, Draculino was my professor. Yes. Yeah, for yes. sure. There, I knew him from because Brazil. you had already been living in Brazil. Right, and, and that's and how I knew about you years before. I have your book. Oh, my book from Japan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like this. Oma Platas. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So then that was. So know, let's go back to yeah. you. Your thing. So you yeah. went against Kira Gracie in uh, 2002. So I got a bronze was, medal. Okay. Yeah, and then it was kind of like oh. I can do this. Yeah, so then I slowly added another day of training. Mm -hmm. So it never was, a, it was a gr very gradual shift. You know, at that time I had a real job and a right. real life. So what was it? Well, you, so had to a, you were going to school, right, before that? or No, I was working already. Okay, you were working uh, already. Yeah. What did you do while you were um, I was a rising in the, in the ranks of jiu-jitsu? At that time I was a broadcast graphics designer um, in Hollywood. So I did... Graphics. Now everybody does it, but um, I was one of the first people to do desktop, not in a specialized um, computer system. It was like on a Mac for the first time, okay. like that everyone does now yeah. uh, easily, but Photoshop and um, Illustrator and uh, a lot of After Effects. I was in After Effects. You went to animator. school for that? Like I did not. I went okay. to art school. I got my master's in fine art at UCLA, and after that I was unemployed. And couldn't get a job as a telemarketer. And uh, a friend of mine, who was a sculptor, went to the American Film Institute for a job interview. And she didn't know how to type. And I had just gotten, my last year of school, a Apple IICI. Okay. I didn't know how to use it. I had a few 
the guy put a bunch of programs on it. Yeah. Kind of hacked my way through things. So I go to this job interview because I know how to type and end up working as an assistant for promoting the advanced technology program, which was one of the two places that you could learn Photoshop, mm. Premiere, which was the editing system at the time, okay. and After Effects. And so I learned that all on the job as I was helping promote those programs and then eventually went and worked in the industry for that. Okay. So there I was w doing graphics and then I ended up in jujitsu. Okay. And so slowly. And school brought you to LA from. Yeah. Because uh, you're from Washington. I'm from Seattle originally. Seattle. Okay. Yeah. I went to art school up there and then I went to graduate school at UCLA. Okay. So I, I knew I wanted to get out of Seattle. All right. So uh, art didn't love and, the weather. and graphics brought you to LA. Yeah. Graduate school. Brought well, you to so LA. I, I went for fine art, which was where you just kind of did whatever you want. I did a lot of mixed media performance type craziness. And um, yeah, I got a master's in cool. that, just causing trouble. And then on the on the side, you were well, then rising I, up to become yeah. one of the well, top uh, competitors. So, yeah, I, I got into graphics. I, I had no formal graphic design training. I only had fine art training mm -hmm. where you kind of did whatever you wanted. So I had to learn how to work with clients and do what they wanted. And then started jujitsu, and then that started to shift as I got deeper in, I started spending more nights, you know, went from two nights a week to three nights a week, slowly to four nights. And then when I got a little more competent, then I wasn't so scared to go to the morning advance class, which was terrifying at the mm. time. Um, and so then it started taking over. And then eventually I started teaching graphics at Otis College. And as I was training more and more, then probably about 2004, Five, I think. I mean, I got my black belt, and then there was a lot of no geek training. So you got your black belt in how many years? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. And then I are started. You are you John Jock's fastest black belt? Uh, probably. Yeah. 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 It's kind of almost like BJ Penn. Sp yeah, he was. Speed. Yeah, well, he was a little faster. Like a year faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so I started going to R one over there. Oh, to uh, learn Rico, wrestling. Rico Schiaparelli. Rico Schiaparelli and Vladimir Matyushenko was over there. Frank Trigg was over there. So who I was, was a, who was a you know D one national champion. Yeah. One of uh, Dan Gables. All legendary wrestlers, which right. I really didn't know much about wrestling, but we were doing nogi over there. I know Cindy would train over there with me. Cindy Omatsu, Omatsu. and Johnny Ramirez would come out, and they were great training partners. Mm -hmm. And then I was starting to learn some wrestling, and for the takedown part of nogi training. Nogi. Yeah, and then, you know, things, there wasn't really any plan, and then eventually I went to Japan and fought Megumi. Well, the idea was to fight someone there, win, and then they would set up the match with Megumi, which two times I failed and choked in in, in Japan. So they brought you out to Japan to compete yeah. against her for grappling only? Well, to, to for a ju well, first it was a gi match against okay. uh, this woman, Nina Mia, and I lost that. Okay. So then, actually... Um, what event was it? I forgot the name of it. Kay. Hamajima was the promoter. Okay. Um, uh, ground, ground something. Ground impact or something. Right? Yes, yeah, something I think. Mm -hmm. And and I know Hamajima promoted a few different things, right. and they had Smack Girl and different things going on. Sarah fought Smack Girl. <laughs> 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 so be interesting names, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know that they'd go over so well these <laughs> days here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, I, so they brought you out for the first fight, the I first lost. grappling match. You lost, yeah. and then they brought you out again against yeah. Megumi. No, it was like a women's nogi tournament. Okay, and that then was a I, tournament. I I lost to um, Rin Nakai. Okay, and I also lost to uh, Roxy Mataferi. Okay, yeah, and is she uh, still fighting in in yeah, MMA? I think, yeah, I think is she she's still is she in the UFC right now. I think she's back then, in. Huh? I think she was back into the UFC. Okay. I think she had one fight, and I think she has one more. Okay. Um, but between that time, I started working with a sports psychologist, mm. because I remember when I was a purple belt, I was going to a tournament. I remember I went to one in Vegas, and I hadn't trained for a couple of days. I usually take a couple of days off, and then we had to travel over there. And I was walking up the bleachers of the high school we were mm. at, and I was exhausted, and I thought. Man, like, why am I so tired? It's like I took a couple of days off to get ready for this, and I did everything right, and then I just wasn't 
quite performing. And I, and I knew somewhere inside I was like, I know I can beat these people technically, but I'm losing these matches, and why am I exhausted? And someone had told me about a sports psychologist a few years before, like a year or two before, who I never really thought about. And then I, I then it came back to me. I thought, I, I think I need to check this out because it's not a technical or physical problem. Mm. And then I realized I needed that other piece. So then I started working with a sports psychologist for a while. Who is the sports psychologist? Uh, it was Mike Gervais. Yeah. And he has a... He has his own podcast. He works right. with a lot of professional athletes, um, football teams, all sorts of athletes. And he has a, a pretty cool podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, he's in, uh, he was in L.A. at the time, right? Yeah, he, he's down, uh, I think it was Redondo Beach or okay. one of the beaches, technically. It's that same South Bay area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're driving all, all over the place in L.A.? Yeah, so I am uh, was living in Tarzana and then eventually Valencia, but mostly Tarzana, mm-hmm. right around the corner from yeah, Jean-Jacques. In the valley. Mm-hmm. And then I would drive down to El Segundo. So I was training there. And then I ended up teaching in El Segundo by the airport at Otis. So as I started training more jujitsu and competing more, I also started phasing out my freelance regular day job. I, I did have a regular day job. At one point, I did work for a company. But usually, I was freelance. And then I took certain days and times off to cater my work life around the jiu-jitsu life, so then that transition starts. And then right before, um, I, I won, in 2006, I won the North American Trials to for Abu Dhabi. A- ADCC, uh-huh. And so at the end of 2006, Christmas break happens, and I think, God, I need to completely get out. Like mostly I was teaching at that point. Mm. I need to get out of that just so I can prepare for Abu Dhabi. And it was the second time they had women. The first time it was invite only in 2005 in LA. And now I won the trials. It was the first time they had the trials. So I won my spot. And I thought, I have to just focus on this. I can't do the other stuff. It's kind of a one-shot deal. When I think of you, I think of that uh, picture of you versus uh, 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 Megumi Fuji. Are you yeah. on your back choking her, right? Yeah. 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 And she was like the number one. She was like the Ronda Rousey of her era. She was like the number one she, uh, yeah. fighter, fighter, yeah. female fighter in the and world. And she, she unbeaten in MMA for many years. Right. Yeah. So she was the Ronda Rousey before Ronda Rousey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And before this, you know, I'd gone to Japan yeah, this, now twice. This hobby, failed. hobbyist, uh, yeah. American girl. <laughs> yeah. You know, like she had been doing this for years. Right. Right. Um, and. So I quit teaching. I don't uh, go back after Christmas kay. break or winter break. I tell them, uh, I'm, and that effectively ended my my life as a graphics artist <laughs> and an instructor. So then I just trained, and then. How did you make money? How did you? Uh, well, I had. Or how did you? I, I, I'm a frugal person. Okay. And I had worked in Hollywood for a while. Okay. And, you know, when I worked in graphics, it. Even when I had a full-time day job, I mean, I was coming home at night and working on freelance jobs at night, sleeping in front of my computer. So I kind of immersed myself in whatever world, and I was really into the graphics world at that time. And either, either I was, I was usually working two to three jobs, a couple freelance things here and there, even when I had a full-time job. Mm-hmm. Or so you're you in know. position to give so it everything you got. Yeah, well, and uh, you know, I'd, I when I was working in graphics. Suddenly I was, I mean, I thought I was going to be a fine artist and I was going to be a homeless person living in my car. So then when I ended up working at Hollywood, it was like, oh my gosh. But I was so busy, it wasn't like I was spending money on a lot of stuff and um, that I did anything really else in my life. So it was pretty focused on that. And then uh, then jujitsu comes and takes over and... Uh, It was interesting because having gone to Japan twice and lost, and then now I win my spot in Abu Dhabi, and I go, and the first round I fight Letitia Ribeiro, who had taken me around Brazil when I went to visit in 2002. Super amazing person. Black belt before right. when she's I... What, she's a, she's a and she's been doing it legend, for years, yeah. yeah. Female. And so now I have to face her, and um, I win that match. And then organically, 
the match that they tried to set up finally happens. So I fight Megumi. Megumi. And um, caught her. Yeah. That's cool. And then, and then I go Jean, into Jean, the... Jean-Jacques style too, huh? Taking the yeah. back. And <laughs> yeah. Your style too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the whatever they give you style. Right, right, yeah? right. So yeah. uh, that was pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like definitely one of, one of uh, the life-changing moments, you know. And something you can be proud of, huh? Like yeah, it's it, it's so for funny. The rest of your life, I you mean, know, I, yeah. I, 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 that's what I remember. Yeah, as you come, that was up. like twenty years ago, almost not twenty years, fifteen years ago, right? Two thousand seven. Seven. Okay, yeah. less 12. than that. Uh, Twelve. Still. Twelve. Huh? Twelve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's crazy that it's been that long, right? But. You know, people coming up and competing, and they always get so worried about everything. And it's interesting, you know, because you've competed for years and years and years as well. And I tell people, you know, every tournament, none of that matters. And every day you go to train, none of that matters. But it, everything matters at the same time, right? Those are all little steps along the way. So in and of itself, that may not really matter. Like that tournament that I did as a blue belt mm -hmm. or a purple belt, may not matter that I lost, but because of what that How you reacted to sets it. into motion, yes. And all those little things, you know, it's the steps up the mountain. Each step in and, uh, in and of itself doesn't matter, but you need all those little things. And then you get to the top and you have this view and you have that one moment um, where all those steps did matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you know. turn all the negatives into positives yeah. by using, yeah. if you have the right attitude and make, yeah. make the right moves. So, you know, it's like all those, every day you go into class, you know, you go and train, and then that time you get, whether you win, lose, otherwise you get beat up, this happens, that happens, none of that matters, but it all contributes. Show up, huh? Yeah. You show up. You just show up, and, you know, sometimes your people, best. yeah, people get upset that they had a bad day. It's like, well, you have to have the bad days, just like in life, you know? It's like, you don't appreciate the good days unless you have the bad days, and that's part of the whole, right? You have to take them both. You started uh, coaching wrestling, right? I did. Well, so I didn't. It, it took ah, me a right, lot. Right. So yeah, yeah, so, you know, I've been trying to learn wrestling for years and years, and then I ended up teaching in Valencia at a gym, and we had the kids doing wrestling. So I s started learning more and more wrestling. Not that I'm, you know, touting myself as a wrestler by any means, but being around it and getting more comfortable, and then you start teaching kids, and then you start teaching adults, and I you start coaching, and... Um, yeah, it starts becoming part of you. What, even what, though, what, even though jujitsu came much quicker, you know, wrestling took a much longer time to to become a little part of me. But you were immersed in uh, yeah. in the wrestling seasons, yeah, for the kids. Yeah, and we would talk a lot about uh, just the different kids and what it gave to you. What did it give to you? You know, I I think any kind of coaching or teaching, you have to figure out how to communicate mm -hmm. to people and to help them to become the best them or to understand or progress. And, you know, there are definitely some coaches that they are who they are and people go to them because of that reason and they stay there. And I always felt as a coach or an instructor when I'm explaining something, if someone doesn't understand it, then I have to come up with a new way of explaining it and whether that's a different analogy or saying, oh, what do you understand? And then putting in a language that can translate. So then when you work with wrestlers or someone that came from wrestling into jiu-jitsu, you, you can communicate with them and translate it into wrestling terms. Like it's like a half Nelson, but with a this, you know? And so then you become what that person needs because it's about them. Are there a lot of female coaches in, in high school wrestling? Oh, no. <laughs> so how do they respond, these wow. teenagers respond to you being a coach? It was awesome. I got a lot of no moms allowed on the floor. Right. Yeah, yeah. Th there was definitely... Like the dads too, like were kids that maybe yeah. come from a, re a wrestling family. Yeah, yeah. They, they had a hard time at first, but mm. I think, you know, at the gym that we were at, they, there was jujitsu and MMA and all this other stuff. So then they would start to see, you know, there, there was some respect when they would start to see, like, who I was as a jiu-jitsu person, even though maybe I didn't accomplish anything competitively in wrestling. They started to respect that. You know, some of the um, people were still very chauvinistic about it, mm. um, and that's fine. You know, like, 
I'm not on a mission to convince everyone, sure. but the people who were open to it, mm. um, for me, that's where I would gravitate toward. And, you know, ki kids are awesome. Yeah. Uh, kids are so much fun. And uh, all of that enhanced my understanding of movement and jujitsu and how the th two things come together, which is interesting because now, like, we just had ADCC. Mm -hmm. And what were the statistic, statistics? Like mostly, a lot of it was uh, from the past, where the matches were won based on wrestling. Right. And now the everyone's crossing over so much with MMA, but just between wrestling and jujitsu, back and forth, which is really exciting. Yeah. You know how the sports are changing, but yeah, like. Do you still keep in touch with some of the kids that you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Some of them are wrestling in college now. It's really cool. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of like... Uh, it's, just, it's different. A little never, bit of a... I've never actually even heard of a female wrestling, high school wrestling coach. You know, you were an assistant, right? Who was the main yeah. coach for... Uh, Brian Peterson Brian, okay. was the main okay, coach. Okay. But, oh, definitely there was... Um, in the first year, it was rough. Um, and then, you know, some of the parents, there was one parent in particular that would just give me so much crap. Like, like in a good way, right? Always tease me. And then testing you, right? No, no, he, he was oh, okay. like, he would just goof. He was a goof. Okay. No, most of the parents were quite supportive. By the time we had high school, we had had a couple years of kids coming Middle up. School. Mm -hmm. So when, and we started a brand new program in an area that had no wrestling. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those people coming in didn't really know that a female wasn't normal until we got to the tournaments. And then when I would get crap from some of the door people or whatever, like, no, women, you know, no. No women on or moms. I'm like, no, I'm a coach. You know, by the third year, they were familiar with me at the different tournaments, and then by the fourth year, they were real familiar. But then I and then I stopped coaching after that first group of kids went through. I'm like, after I just broke them in, now they're all cool with me. Now I, you know, I've, my work is done here. Have you seen um, that uh, Indian movie Dangal? Yes, yes. What's it? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I have a bad memory. Of of what? Wait, I. I you know, the, the, so he, I the, don't, I don't remember movies. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had you have a bad memory of that movie. So the, the I don't dad, the it. dad, the, 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 there's a, you know, there's a, a man and he, uh, he, he gets older and he needs to have a family and be able, be able to provide for his family. So he's got to put wrestling on the back burner to be able to, you know, he, work and make money. And then he's like, my son is going to have to, uh, you know, get that, get that medal for India. Because India has a as a great wrestling tradition, yeah, yeah. right? Well, in but the past, you know, and, what I'm, I'm trying to remember if I saw the movie or if I just saw the preview. Okay, Amir, Amir okay. Khan was the main actor, and then it's a true story. It's based on a true story, mm. right? If you Google it, uh, Dangal, yeah, and have you to see go. like the, the the women wrestling. So and he started having daughters, okay, and he kept having daughters, another daughter, another daughter, and then uh, one day, you know, the girls were old enough, and they got into a fight, into a scuffle with some boys. And I guess they got the better of them. And he's like, what? You know, what's what, what? And then he found out that there's wrestling for girls. And so he's like, okay, we're going to start training camp tomorrow. You know, I think I just saw the trailer. And he's, yeah, okay. I so think, he started yeah. he started training his daughters, and they ended up becoming, they totally champions. broke. Yeah, champions. Yeah. From, like, you know, wrestling in the in the dirt to uh, to uh, state, uh, national yeah. world you know and make getting medals for india yeah and so all of the family like the sisters and it's really cool one of the one of the daughters is actually is going to fight mma now i just read about wow. it last week in one fc but they're super famous i think i think it was the top grossing movie in india and china and in asia uh, yeah i'm gonna have to go watch it. yeah it's it's so good it's on netflix yeah i think i just um saw so the inspiring yeah yeah I, my, I watched it with my daughters too oh, that's just awesome. that, you know anything's possible right your daughters train they train yeah course <laughs> make them my son my <laughs> daughters my my daughters are the she's she's back both of them are pretty athletic but one of them is really athletic so uh, yeah good genes they, uh, 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 it's it's nice you know it's nice to see have them be a part yeah for sure well you, you definitely have the whole family involved which is really yeah awesome yeah you know. one way or another <laughs> that's a great dream right like right. Uh, you know um so Let's let's talk about your uh, floating. The, what's it, what's the, the the the? So once upon a time, I. So while you were in Santa Clarita. So I was in Santa Clarita and. Um, at Big John McCarthy's. And I already um, had Epstein Barr virus and chronic fatigue. Okay. And I was trying to be a little more pragmatic about life, and 
um, trying to think of a business that wouldn't involve me using my body, mm. like training, teaching, and coaching and stuff. And I so you started to feel fatigue from like there's the fatigue coming on, right? This yeah, is, well, this is after you were in, competing at a uh, competing. Yeah, so uh, 2007, I did Abu Dhabi. Oh, okay, I did the Fila Worlds in Turkey. Right. Turkey, yeah, all that stuff. Um, we had a CrossFit certification where you just work out, and I never kind of recovered. And I end up going to the doctor, and they basically told me I had mono and have a good life. And <laughs> because there was no, there right. was nothing they could like do at that time. Multiple sclerosis. They gave me a stack of drug books. Would tell me which one you want to take. Yeah. No, no motion. <laughs> like yeah. So she just said, um, actually, it was probably it's 2007, and it was almost um, exactly to the year because I remember it was a week or two before. Thanksgiving that she called me with the results and basically said, you have EBV, Epstein-Barr virus. There's nothing we can do about it. Have a good life. Interestingly enough, they have now found out that it is the precursor to MS. Mm. <laughs> so now we're connected. <laughs> but uh, so I had already been struggling with the fatigue. So it, it attacks the myelin? The immune system attacks the myelin on the nerves? I don't know the... That part. Okay. We'll talk about it. We'll talk another it. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure exactly, but I know only last year, I think a study finally came out that, or something came out that they connected EBV with other things, Immune including note. fibromyalgia and MS. Yeah, it's, it's similar. And similar. For so sure. for, for years, every once in a while, I would Google and I would find nothing and nothing and nothing. And that was only last year, I think, or maybe it was two years ago now. Mm -hmm. Time goes quick. So we have to kind of figure that out a little bit more um so um i got into float tanks mm -hmm. and i loved going to float i went to a place here in burbank and i really liked the recovery and the whole experience so i thought well i'll start a float tank and got really into that world and went to the can convention. you explain the how, how it works so basically, it um, it's actually much more popular now. I was right. a little ahead of my time right. with it. So basically, it's a sensory deprivation tank. Um, and you go into a dark tank, and it has water and a lot, a lot, a lot of Epsom salts, so that no matter what, you are floating. And the temperature is, is at body temperature, so you basically feel weightless in there. And it takes all the stress and strain off your body. It's great for fibromyalgia, from what I understand, because of gravity basically causing all this pain because the weight of your own body. Sure, it's a lot of things, right? Yeah. So when you're, uh, I guess at the time, you know, I'd heard that that was for a lot of people that had fibromyalgia and mm. those kinds of things. Like that was the only time that they could feel painless because mm. they were weightless in there. And... I liked it because I could get that recovery in an hour, make up for sleep and recovery, and I would feel better. And so I um, started a business with a float tank, and uh, it didn't catch on so quickly at the you're time. Uh, you know, <laughs> you're sour about it. You know? I'm it's just, sour. I just, I just think it's interesting, you know, that you kind of you go like down these different different ways. Yeah. Like you got the. The mental coach, the psychology yeah. coach. You, you, well, similar you, to you. Yeah, right? I like mean, we, we do we something, we feel pattern. something, and we like it, and we, we go for it. Yeah, or something we have, we have an adversity, and then it's like, okay, let me figure it let out. me see what, what I can do to... You don't accept it. Yeah, and if I'm going to struggle with this, I'm going to struggle with... I'm, I'm going to give it the best fight. You know, That's it's it. like being a fighter, yeah. right? It's the same thing. And so with the Epstein-Barr stuff, there was nothing for years. And so I was changing my diet. I was trying different things. Mm -hmm. And then the float tank seemed to help. Different things helped or didn't help. And it's just, you know, sometimes I think that, that having the chronic fatigue part of things um, was more of a just an early wake-up call to become really conscious about what you're doing. And, you know, it puts me on the side of, I, I know there's still it, it kind of goes against the grain. Everyone's like pushing harder right. and, and you can stop when you're dead and all this stuff. It's like, well, that's what got me sick. Yeah. You that, know, that was my was tendency, too tendency much, before too much pushing, um, and it on me, all the fronts yeah, it made me and sure. it wears your down your yeah. immune system. And I actually saw it happen to several other 
students who had jobs and families. And then, uh, you know, at the time... Everybody and, stressed out. And then the... The world is stressed out. And then, well, yeah, and then I saw it with women, especially that got into CrossFit, and they for the first time kind of felt this different empowerment in their body. So they got more and more into it. Right. Kind of like I got more and more into jujitsu and conditioning and doing all this other stuff that made you feel good, but they still had their family, all these other things. And now you're loading on so much that you're overtaxing your body for an extended period of time. And then you fall off that cliff, which I think is what happened to me with my immune system. And a few women that I know got sick in the same way, similar age, but doing too many things. You know, so it's interesting, 100 years ago, they didn't have all these things, right? These, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, they, it yeah. seems like there's something that we're doing in society now. I mean, uh, I don't know. You know maybe yeah. we, we're, we're, you know, we're less phys physically active. We drive around. I don't know. That's causing these I mean, computers or cell phones now. But And then also when all those things happen and then things keep piling up, right? It's a lot of the non-physical stress you know maybe in the past f it, hunting and whatnot it was right, like a right, physical right. stress and which is what jujitsu does right it's like stress on your body and then you have this kind of place an outlet in a cycle right. where people maybe Can because they're sitting energy, yeah. they have all the stress but there's no outlet for it now they're sitting on their computer on their phones and and there's never the outlet mm -hmm. and maybe that's the piling up or some combination or when they start to find that outlet maybe it's overloaded already or something i don't know yeah yeah for sure i think so yeah i think so something is something yeah. is uh you know something's going on different right that, yeah that we because we're having all these these uh diseases and these uh you know these di weird different things happening now that we didn't have 50 years yeah. ago but i think what i'm learning now you know i take my supplements and I used to, even when I was sick, you know, I would still crash, mm -hmm. right, after things would accumulate. So I think it really forced me to listen to my body, mm -hmm. and I think I'm doing that better. And maybe that's part of it when you're sitting in front of the computer. Like, I think so much of our lifestyle, we're not listening to our bodies. That's why people Awareness, are, yeah. you know, they're eating crap, and they're not listening <laughs> to all the different things that are going, you know... They're like, I, be, I have IBS. It's like, well, why? Because you're eating this crap, but they don't connect it, and they want a pill. They think like MS, MS is uh, like bacterial, right? Mm. And so like, we think of our brain yeah. being the boss, right? But like it's our stomach, they say, you know, like our stomach, we know the vagus nerve and all that. Like our stomach's the boss, right, of our brain. Yeah. And then we have more like not our own DNA cells, but more bacteria cells in our body than our own DNA cells. And that's dictating. That's, that's the boss of our stomach. Right. So your food, everything that you put in your body. And then, of course, how you feel, how you, you know, the, the way of life that you live, right. if you're stressed out, right. if you everything that you think. But then we're so disconnected. So then people take a pill. Right. To appease this, that and the other thing. And you get more disconnected. Further and further. Yeah. And then you get addicted to that. And then you, yeah. you can't get off of it. It's and like then you have the side effect. Cycle. Right. And then you exactly. add more and more. But like it seems like right, like movement, you know, like, yeah. you know, you know, I've crazy passionate about the tack fit you know because yes. it's all the right stuff it's like recovery from stress it's like we work out 60 percent i feel like i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a, a billboard for, for but, you, but i am but you are <laughs> it's improved my life you know it's changed my life like watching your transition and journey through all this stuff from watching you way back in for jujitsu and then mma and then with the whole ms issue and to where I you are up, now right? i use it to be better even yes it, it it's crazy. But it's all the right stuff. It's yeah. all the right stuff. And not just for me with somebody with uh, MS, but just for everybody, but, really. But now here you are, like maybe if you never got MS, you would never be in the, the state that you're in now, right? Like like to me, you're you're like beastier than you've ever been, you, you know? Like you're probably in better shape than you've ever been. Yeah, right? I, but, feel that, I feel like that. But in the same way for me, EB, for and you, And less MS. is more. Less is more. Yeah. And I'm learning that. Yeah. But it was like the like wake-up call. The wall, like, yes. you know, hardcore, you know. <laughs> till but now I'm like less you're dead. Is, right, yeah. right, right. Well, I'll rest when I'm dead. But yeah. now it's like, hey, discipline, less is more. Less is more. Yeah. And, and then it's also, I think it was just a wake-up call for us to pay attention. And then now you start to learn this whole other way of being. Mm -hmm. 
and of understanding and listening. And, you know, I, I don't know that I've had a real crash in, in a while because I think I can start to feel it or I catch, yeah, you know, yeah, like, awareness, yeah. yeah uh, like I, I haven't been sleeping enough. I haven't been doing this and I better take care of this. And but you've been, you've been into like all kinds of functional training things. Like you did the RKC, the Pavel's, yeah. uh, um, kettlebell the certification. Kettlebells. Yeah. Uh, what else, what other things have you done? You said you did Z health back in the day. Yeah, I did one of the Z health things. Kind of did everything went through the CrossFit phase. Okay. You know, I think everything has its benefits and I think, also, we're, we're some of that way. I think we're learners and explorers, right? And when we have these adversity things that come into our life, whether it's MS or th like that, that gives us even more direction mm -hmm. on where we're going. And even if we didn't have those things, we'd still be trying to figure out other things, right? Just trying to improve and better ways to do things. Um, so I think... So you, res you uh, we'll go back. Let's go yeah. back to the yeah. to the coaching. You see, you, you know, you coach wrestling, and then uh, and then uh, you kind of took a break from kind of jujitsu, right? Well, so because of the fatigue. Okay, you couldn't so, train jujitsu because of that. Yeah, I would train and um, crash. Like within thirty minutes, it was like someone just sucked the air out of me, and I was like, and I'd Except have to crawl into bed for a day. Mm. Um, I started trying to change my diet, mm. doing all these different things. Nothing really helped, and so. After about five years of that, I'd roll maybe every six months. And it was just like, oh, my gosh, this is the greatest thing ever. And you know, I want to train again. And, and then after. after it was either I hurt something or um, I was just exhausted. Like, it, it never – I could never really just train it regularly again. And then in 2014, it was October 2014, I decided I'm going to quit my job at the gym quit jujitsu because I'm not training, I'm teaching, but I'm not getting to roll. Mm. And what I really love is rolling. And if I can't do that, I'm not going to do any of it. So I took a private student. We went to Hawaii for a tournament. And I decided when I came back, I was going to quit my job, quit the jujitsu MMA world, everything that I had connected to it. Mm. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I just was done I, I was struggling for years so much and i'm like i'm just gonna cut this all out of my life but when i was in hawaii a friend of mine told me about this red marine algae that would help me feel better and within a couple of days i started what kind of algae it. it's red marine algae and everyone asked me and they're like what was that i want to try it it's like for me it was pretty specific to the epstein bar you know, virus you know although what, they uh, say 90 percent I, I have a friend that you know i do, I do these uh, neuroscience courses the yeah. health and all that and uh, I have this fr Austrian friend. He's, uh, you know, he, he's he's really into it, and he told me about this algae. Was it red marine? It was probably that. Because there's also blue green, which I think it was the blue green. Yeah, blue green. It's a little bit different. Okay. Um, so I you tried. You tried both. I didn't try blue green, but I do take. Uh, I mean, I've got you, some, you know, some kind of you, algae. you get you get you, you get some <laughs> supplement, and you try it for a while, and then you try to see if it helps you, yeah. and then you kind of put it okay. in and out, and then it kind of sits there because you're not using it, right. and then a year later you hear something, and you go, oh, let me try that again, and so there's always tinkering okay. constantly, right? Like sure. like for me, it's always looking like let me add this in. Oh, does that seem to help? Not so much, and then you run out, and you're like, oh, it didn't really change, so I won't put that in. Mm. And I, I mean, I think everyone should be doing that just in their regular life. Sure. Whether it's their diet or anything, you know, whether it's their activities. It's like, does this fit into my life? Does it make me feel better? Does this help? Oh, it makes me feel worse. Like, maybe I'll cut that out. So it was, uh, the, your, your algae was what? So the, the red marine algae. Red marine, okay. So within, like, a couple of days. Well, they say 90% of the population does have uh, Epstein-Barr virus. Okay. And yep. most people, like, when you're a kid, everyone knew that kissing disease, you know, someone got mono. Mm. And supposedly there's nothing they could do about it. And then it goes away after three months, six months of resting. Man, it's crazy. You know, you go to the doctor and you, I mean, you kind of trust everything that they tell you, right? Like, man, I broke my orbital mm. and I was kind of blind. It was actually at the time we were going to Turkey. Yeah. Uh, at my, my Armenian wife. You're not going to Turkey. <laughs> well, I was supposed to go to Turkey. <laughs> uh, I broke my orbital, you know, and, uh, and, uh, you know, you go to the doctor, you go to, the, and that those were the fight doctors, right? Yeah. And the, I was kind of, I was blind in that area when I would look down and uh, they didn't tell me like, you know, you could do eye drills and things like that, you know, to release the tension for it to come back. And there's things you can do, but they're like, ah, oh, maybe it'll come back, maybe it won't. And you trust them, right? Because they're yeah. doctors. Yeah. And then so many other, uh, other things, you know, like the whole mess thing, like, I mean. Yeah. 
and but we have the technology, the YouTube. I mean, all this stuff that we have online now. Like you can you can really do research that yeah. wasn't there even ten years ago, five yeah. years ago. Yes. And there's stuff that you can. It keeps y- changing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, pff, yeah, it's like all this neuro stuff, all this, you know, like all the, f- the fascia, all the it stuff is like it's right now. You know, it's happening right now. Like, and a lot of the doctors aren't up to date with these things. Well, you're. I think you're the probably most up to date person. You're so <laughs> on it. You know, like I, I don't keep I'm up with <laughs> everything. You know, with the colors we on just the kind of right, yeah, we, we just kind of like touch base every once in a while, and I'm like. Oh, like all this cool stuff he was telling me about, and I kind of go into it, and then I'll go, you know, shiny, shiny off to something else. Um, but then I keep getting updated, and what's well, yeah. allowing me to do more and more and more, yeah. be healthier and healthier and healthier. You know, like I'm getting older, but I feel like I'm working better. It's crazy, right? It's yeah. like, how is that possible? Yeah, it's like doing the right things, optimization things. Yeah. So, because yeah. uh, you know, it's so crazy because even before that, you were. A regular grown ass man, but your body then to what your body is now. And when I when I got totally into the UFC, different. I couldn't do one single push up because of you know my shoulders were so yeah. bad and they were hurting. Yeah, and so I couldn't do one push up. I remember that you know I got into the UFC. Okay, yeah, the, the peak of my <laughs> as long uh, as athletic I do career. A I couldn't. Well, I could I could do like those Hindu push ups. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't do a push up. Isn't that crazy? But you find a way, right? You yeah. find a way, and I think that's what martial arts has given me. Like you find a way, no matter what the the you're. You're surrounded. The odds are everything's stacked against you, and you find a way to win. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah, I, I think. And I think that's that's the mindset that yeah. it's given me to kind of, you know, do good and overcome whatever whatever that gets thrown at us. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I told uh, my I just told Jack Lino, he my my professor, right? That that that's really really like the martial arts has given me that. Yeah. yeah. And you just keep searching. I think for everybody, you know, for everybody, yeah. really, if you get into it. Yeah. Because then it turns in transfers into your life right but uh, you know like you've gone so far in to that whole sphere of that world which is incredible and i just like steal little bits and pieces from you when i see you because like i went back to fine art right so i started making art right 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 and there's only so many Mm -hmm. hours in the day so i still uh, like it makes you, you feel you good. Have more, you, have, you have more of the scientific and you more, you know, like, and you have a facility that it all the works culture. into your life, right? And so then, like I said, I just kind of steal little bits from you and have those seep in and try to incorporate them when I can. And, um, you know, I always try to get to tech fit and sometimes I make Man, it. And like tech fit, you know, I don't know. I feel like I, up TAC well, fit, I feel like I would be a lot better if I did it regularly, but I, 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 I want it to be in every, I think it's the perfect, yeah. uh, you know, like if you talk about business, but like, perfect fit for any jiu-jitsu gym like Jean-Jacques went on Joe Rogan and people messaged me like oh man like you talk about the perfect gym would be you know basically having tack fit in their jiu-jitsu with the jiu-jitsu gym yeah because you get that awareness with the jiu-jitsu a lot of the stuff is like you know jiu-jitsu kind of moves you know but you break things down to the simplest level so it helps your jiu-jitsu helps you your body helps you know help just helps everything and it's a perfect like kind of model right because then you can do all the right stuff yeah. with jujitsu. Because you need to recover. I mean, it's like you know, everyday yeah. pohada for sure. But you gotta, you know, <laughs> everyday recovery too <laughs> from the pohada, you know, or else like, you need to start to break down. Yeah. So uh, I mean, just to well, I, you know, part of I mean, it's like I mean, it's cool because it, people it are getting to, smarter now. Yeah, but that. it seems to me everyday pohada includes the recovery. Right. Right. The gold mine, like you it's know, the like recovery, Ziha, the, Ziha, the, diet, the, the everything. The, the Scott Sonnen, you know, you've been saying he's been saying yeah. it forever. It's like the gold mine is in the recovery. Yeah. You're only you know, you get stronger in the recovery. Yeah. Not in the training, but actually in the recovery of the I mean, after the training. Yeah. But uh, yeah, to me it and the sport's getting older and people in the sport are getting older and then you know, my friend had that I've been collaborating with, you know, she has this thing called Rolled Forever. It's like, how do we do that? You know? We get smarter, but every day Pahada seems to be, like they always call it jujitsu lifestyle, but that includes your diet. That right, includes, right, right, right. you know, what you do for your mind and right. your soul and your body, right. all the different things. Right. It's not just what you do on the mat. Right. You know, you have to do all those things so you can continue. Yeah. Push my, it on the like mat. my goal is to be, you know, be my best at every decade, right? And my, for the students too. Yeah. You know, not be 40 years old or 50 years old and walking with the, uh, with the, uh, with a walker, yeah. Well, because <laughs> or with a cane, right? But you know, being being your best till the very end. Yeah, because I, I think you know you still. I, I think there are people that do get 
injuries and whatnot. Sure. I mean, we've been through all that. And that's part of it, too, is how to recover from the injuries. Nobody yes. taught us that. But I think people get stuck, and then they're like, oh, well, I can't do that because of this, because they haven't continued that search, where I think we keep searching. I mean, I mean, after my orbital got broken, my mom looked at me and said, are you done? And I was like, no, no. Like, this is... Where you are. Yeah. And Makes you happy. So for both of us, I think we just keep looking so that we can continue that so that we aren't that guy that's going oh i had to stop that because of this it's like right. no i do all these things and then i can continue doing the thing that makes me happy and it's all part of that right because it's not just that part of your life that you're trying to improve it's everything right yeah so movement like we have the bang muay thai we have tack fit we yeah. have everything right because capoeira Couple out of two, yeah. I love seeing those pictures in your outfit. <laughs> <laughs> like, My oh. white spandex. <laughs> they're not bell bottoms, bottoms anymore. They're they're regular pants now. Okay, she's like, <laughs> I upgraded. She's all pissed off. <laughs> like, you're like, honey. I'm the yellow belt now. <laughs> honey, could you get a pair? <laughs> Oh man, it's so funny. Late at night, it's later in the evening, and we have the class, and people just like I put my cup of water pants on, and they're like, "All right, all right, professor." <laughs> <laughs> you, you but I love it. it. I love it. You it's know, like your secret just, life. I mean, I, I love it. You know, I, I like the you know, like you learn you instruments, and just like you start and you start singing. Like, I don't. When do I really sing? Uh, I don't you know? know, when do we? When do you sing? I don't. I mean, yeah, you know. So so okay, maybe in your car. Maybe I don't know. Maybe. In the privacy, but you're doing it, and you know, with the group and together, and it's at the end of the day, I'm I'm tired, right? I, we do it's at the end of the uh, at the end of the day, but after we after I do capoeira and we do the the little uh, circles and we we do our little singing and instruments and stuff, you feel good. So how do you manage? Did you ever have fatigue? Yeah, for sure. So I how do you manage doing? Because I see you do capoeira, you do all the different things in tack fit, and and. For me, I, you know, a couple of years ago, I came to Tack Fit, and then I remember I crashed a couple of days later. And I'm not, I'm not always willing. I, I know other people do. Uh, a friend of mine that does, that's also has Epstein Barr and regular fatigue every day. Um, she doesn't train as much jujitsu, um, but she does strength and conditioning once a week. I'm not willing to give up my jujitsu mm -hmm. training to incorporate some of the other stuff. And then, you know, I came to the Thursday morning flow. Mm -hmm. um, Tack fit class, which was more gentle, mm -hmm. right? How do you depend who you talk to? Yeah. How do you do <laughs> theoretically? So then I go, okay, well, I'll just go to his class on Thursdays, uh -huh. and then I don't have to give up my jujitsu and worry about going over the edge, right? Pushing too much. How do you? How are you able to do that? How am I able to manage? I, I selfishly my, ask my, my training and yeah. the lifestyle and everything, yeah. the work and everything, and kids. Good God, you have kids. So I think, I think uh, for sure I've, you know, my wife and, you know, I mean, but I, I think I just cut out everything that stresses me out, you know, and for sure like mindset and stuff, right? It helps a lot. I don't get overwhelmed and I definitely do things that I'm crazy passionate about. Yeah. And that's what, that's what motivates me. And I really learned that when I was training for that tag fit team leader thing. Mm. Um, just the, the, the act of training for something that was kind of like impossible for me just because of all the injuries I've, ha I've had, and then of course the MS and all that, it made me like rise up, and it taught a lot. It taught me a lot about myself, that you know, just what I don't know where it comes from, but you know, just the I think for sure like jujitsu, like my background and stuff, but uh, it makes me like rise up, and so having like some kind of um, I guess goal, always some kind of goal, makes me rise up, and uh, it drives me. It drives me and gives me. I don't know where the energy comes from, but it just comes. You know, if I'm in, if I'm in line, you know. And then at, after you reach the goal or get to that point in time, then do you then you have kind of a crash recovery after that, or how did that? You know, yeah, for sure. I mean, but I that, that always it's happens. the same I mean, thing right? for, for tournaments, right? Anyway. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. you compete and you you train for a tournament. Yeah. ACC, what's next? What's after that? We were talking about with uh, Lars Leinhardt. He he went to the World Cup. Uh, when they when Germany won in Brazil, right, and he was saying like for like a week after, like all the coaches, all the players, like they were just partying. depressed. Well, well, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, well, no, but you know they yeah. won, right? They, of course they partied, but yeah. then after like a couple of weeks, it was like the lowest of low. You know, you yeah. had the highest of high, and yeah. then it was the lowest of low. And so, just I, th I guess you need that to kind of balance things out, right? Well, it's like a post postpartum thing too, right? right? And even when I worked, when you, if if you're ever doing project based work. 
like in Hollywood or whatever, it, it always happens. And it's the same with tournaments or whatever. Like you get so focused on this one deadline and everything starts to build up and you right. start to, you know, disregard everything else and your whole life becomes about that thing. And then all of a sudden it's gone, which, you know, right. I say postpartum, it's like a pregnancy. All of a sudden it's yeah. changed. When and I, now you're like, now what? When, when I was younger, I remember I used, to, I used to compete and I had big tournaments and then I would always, okay, I'll be happy when I do this, you know. I, what's the next goal? What's the next goal? What's the next goal? And I kept pushing, 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 pushing. And uh, I remember my wife was like, I, you know, I'll be, I'll be, ha are you happy? And I'd be like, yeah, I'll be happier or happy when I do this. That's, that's and I've changed it. Yeah, yeah. I've changed it. I'm always happy. Yeah. I'm always happy. I'm that's, happy hanging out with you. I'm yeah. happy, you know, getting, I'm grateful. I'm happy doing everything. I get to live the life I get to live, you know, I get to hang out with awesome people and, you know, do what I love to do. Yeah. Um, but I definitely realized the the power of having a goal, something that I'm in line with that resonates with me, that I feel. It all comes from like from the I don't know. It's kind of weird, but you know, from the heart. Yeah. So things that really and that that's that's what gives me energy. Uh, you know, and I can I, work seven days a week. I can work like yeah. day and night. You know, it's it's it's. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I can't explain it. No, I get that. You know, whether you whatever. From, yeah, and then it's like you sleep that, two or three hours a night. State. Yeah. Talk about the flow state yeah. stuff that. Uh, that uh, I mean the the what's the, what's was the coach's name? The oh, Mike Gervais. Yeah. Um. Because you know, you Scott, know Scott Sonnen. I don't know if you want to. Do you feel feel okay talking about it? Yeah, I think it's changed over time. I haven't really kept up with it. Mm. I learned what I learned from him for what I was doing in jujitsu, mm. and then over time, you know, I think training in jujitsu. Um, helps facilitate seeing different things mm. and like flow state i think they're different i just have this thought and and i think he's already figured this out a long time ago but they're different right. kinds of flow state right for sure yeah and uh that's come through my progression in jujitsu and understanding you know at first with the competition stuff when i was seeing him i only understood flow state as one thing mm. and then back to training the last few years, now I'm seeing so many different levels of not just in jiu-jitsu, but just in your life, right? And what you were saying earlier about getting rid of the stress in your life, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm what super, I, like, hardcore with it. Like, yeah. something stresses me out, I just, I cut it out right away. Whereas in the, in the, past, in the past, you would, I would ah. just, well, I would, have let, I would have let it, like, stay there. Yeah. But I just, I'm like, pff, hardcore, if something bothers me or it doesn't make me feel good. I That's just a sign to yeah, let I it don't, go. I, yeah, yeah, right away. That's and awesome. It's, and it's helped me. It's helped me a lot, tremendously. Um, did that ever get you in trouble? Like when you get stressed out about your taxes and you just cut them out and you don't pay taxes? <laughs> 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 I mean, there's certain adulting things that I, I would like I, I to. I don't do that part. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have someone. You, yes. you got a guy. A <laughs> woman. Oh, yeah, you got, a, you got someone. So, so you either cut it out or hire someone. <laughs> Or, or marry someone? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need a wife. <laughs> I need a wife to take care of me. Oh, man. Um, oh, man. No, but, you know, do, you have to do the things that, of course, like, you have to do things that you don't want to do, right? Yeah. And they can be stressful. Like, you know, I, I don't like to be in front of the computer. Mm. But there's all kinds of things that you can do to, I mean, to feel comfortable. Like, the, the colors, right? Like, we're looking at the blue light. I mean, we have the fluorescent lights, we have the, the computer, and, and like for a lot of hours, they start to, it really affects your brain, really affects your quality of life. Yeah. And it's stress. Like those, you have receptors, you have like the red, the blue, the yellow. And if like we're looking at blue, like they said, like uh, I've heard some things like 14 hours a day. And uh, and uh, so, you know, like I, well, I was showing you the last okay, time, so I was showing you on my phone, yeah. like to change the color setting on your phone. So I have like, I walk around with sometimes it's green, like green <laughs> yellowish, yeah. And you're like, what the hell, what's wrong with your phone? And I'm like, oh, I, so I changed the settings so my, you know, those receptors, those those color receptors wouldn't, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. So and I learned I, that from the Z Health, like the Eric Cobb, he was, you know, he, he showed us. So after you changed the color, we changed the color setting on my phone, and then and he forgot how to get it back. Well, um, that's one thing. But then every time I was somewhere and I'm looking, people look at my phone like, "What's wrong with your phone? Why is it? 
what's wrong with the color of your They're phone? They're so addicted oh to my that gosh. blue and color, then I, like, I, like bugs, you know? And then I'm like, showing someone a picture and color. I'm like, oh, wait, let me turn that off. But actually, I think the update made it easier to change right, it back. Right, you click, like, <laughs> I do the triple click. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the new thing I just found out with the new with the new update. But, like, so many people were so flipped out. Like, what's wrong you know, with like your the, phone? You know, and then, you know, if you're on a computer, for example, like little things, right? Like, uh, like the Bulletproof guy, he has, like, the... The orange glasses. The orange glasses, yeah. exactly, yeah. you know? So those little things, and then you take away that that you know the the threat threat level, I guess you know, because everything. So there's in no your stress response. Is, right, right. Well, so you take that away, take it away, and all the little things like the there's like little vagus like stimulate you know like the stimulators that you have on your muscles right to to, to give it stimulation. So you, there's like a vagus nerve on the, your ear, neck, you know, area, and you can stimulate it to kind of relax you. Like it stimulates the parasympathetic mm. kind of part of your nervous system, right? And uh, and like a like a for me like the Lars Leonhardt he's shown me like the he just did it within like five minutes he's so man this guy he was super inspirational for me uh, like how to be like a, as a like a role model really you know he within five minutes he told me all these things and he just felt it you know yeah he's like put a like a basically like a girdle on and not just one way but a, a, a way, one way that it kind of pulls like the left side all of my organs together and so all those th- all these like little things. Make me allow me to be able to keep pushing, 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 and uh, but where I'm not stressed, right? And so it allows me to do more wow. without being stressed. And so it's being smart, right? Like, yeah. I mean, tack for like the world's smartest workout. Yeah, it's, it's being smart, it's being smart, you know, like less is more, like the breath, the movement, the structure. I mean, all the like, and I'm just, I guess, that that formula, I'm transferring it to everything, like the jujitsu and just everything, you know, Quali- like the way of life. Yeah. So we can do more and like less is with less, less is more like you can do more. Yeah. By, you know, just being smart with things, having that awareness, doing the right things. Yeah. You know, one thing I wanted to touch on when you're talking about goals and I, I think, you know, I, I've in the past joked like, oh, I've never had a goal. You know, it's like just taking the next step. But I think in, when I was teaching, I was teaching college mm. and, um, I, I think people are taught in the educational system. Either, well, there are people that don't have any goals and they're lazy or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then those are the people that you're like, you got to push harder. You have to like set your goals. Well, they're not passionate about their goals, right? Yeah. yeah so it's, it's, it's not about setting goals. I mean, it's about setting the right goals, right? And we don't always learn that because a lot of the kids are like, well, I just need an A. I don't care if I learn the information. It's not because they want to be there and learn the information. That's a different, a whole different thing than what you're talking about when you're finding goals that make you happy and that resonate with you. And I think those are the goals we need to find, right? Like people have these goals, like I want to make a million dollars or whatever, and then they're killing themselves right. for these Things that are, goals are that, important, yeah. Yeah. and Like you with jujitsu, you like cut everything out so you could follow your dream. Yeah. Because it's just what I wanted to do. Right. And things just, I and just started most making Most people don't choices. do that. Yeah. And it wasn't conscious from the beginning at all i mean that's why i tell people it's not like i was like here and i want to go there because you have to take the journey that's your life right Mm -hmm. and different things will come up and then you have to adjust because who knew you'd end up doing what you're doing and who knew i would end up doing what i'm doing right but because of these certain circumstances that's what changes your life and who you are right Right. and how you live so I, i think it's interesting for people to figure out over time to listen to themselves, right? Because I don't feel like I have a big goal over there, but it's kind of this amorphous Stay true to yourself. thing where you just, I just feel pulled towards something, so I just keep doing that, and it keeps feeding me, right? And I, I see that is in it, you. Is it, is it easy to do that, though, sometimes? Do you, doubt, do you doubt yourself? Absolutely. You're like, am I, I doing always, the right thing? I feel like uh, there's two images that I have. One is I'm on a tightrope mm. across a huge canyon, and every once, like, and I'm going, and everything is great. And every once in a while, I look down, and I get overcome with fear, and I have these moments, and you know, I have people in my life that I might express this to, mm. and they're just like just keep going you're fine you know so it's that moment when you look down and you become aware instead of just being you start becoming aware of things that you have to let it go right and just keep going 
and just keep trusting. Surrender to the process. Yeah. yeah. And then the other image is with the Wiley Coyote. I have like a little thing that I've posted before where he runs off the edge of the cliff and he's in the air. And if he just didn't look down, he would be fine. But the minute he looks down is when he falls, right? Those two images are always, so it's every time I'm like getting nervous, it's just like someone, usually it comes, I, I'll start to feel it and it helps to have someone say, hey, you're fine. You're going to be fine. Just keep, just keep trusting it. And uh, when I was training for that attack fit team leader, like I told you it was like an m- impossible thing for me, like to lift the weight with all of my injuries on my elbows and my wrists. Suck, and wimp. My <laughs> <laughs> Suck it up. <laughs> Suck it up, Powder yeah, but, <laughs> but getting you that weight. You want to be a tech fit team leader? Right, yeah. yeah, you got to suck that shit up. But uh, getting that weight Ooh, up, I you know? Sorry. I mean, I would. Uh, I you would, have uh, to put a warning on this podcast <laughs> now. <laughs> I mean, I, I would, uh, I would, you know, try, I'd try, I'd try, I'd do like these. L sits, these kettlebell push presses, you know, not push presses, even just like just just presses, right? Strict presses. And I'm like, man, this is never gonna come, you know. And I, I kind of want to be done with this because there's a lot of pain involved, right? Of like just the hard work, you know. And I'm like, oh, I want to be done with this. And then it would never, not that it would never come. I was just like, I, and then I would, go, I would go home, you know, and I'd be like, you know what? Like, fuck this, you know. Like I'm gonna do this, or die, you know, I'm gonna do it as long as it takes takes me 10 years i'm gonna do this or die trying and it didn't happen just once it happened a few times you know and the next day i was able to push press or or even strict press right the the weight up that surrendering to it yeah surrendering to the process do you have a do you have a story of that Uh, you know i think that that stuff happens all the time and I, i i think the confusing tricky part is trying to listen and figure out which which road, which battle. You know, wh- like, like sometimes you have difficulties coming at you. And it's like, does this mean I should keep pushing and trying? Or does this right. mean that's I need to battle, change right? direction? That's, that's, the, that's the battle. Yes. That's and, the battle. And, and again, it's like right that. Thing. It's that thing where you're walking, you're walking on a tightrope, and when you look down, it's the same exact same feeling analogy right it, it's like sometimes you're in the thick of it and you're going through the battle and you're you know persevering through that adversity and there's no question you just are in it and you're doing it and you're in a certain flow state whether it's your life or an actual physical activity and you don't question it but there are other times either maybe before or after where you're a different kind and and, and you're questioning and i, I mean that's i don't why, have that's where that goal i think that's where that goal comes in again well, you have to remind yourself of what you and have why a goal and, as, and as hard as attention. crazy as it, as it seems, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. But having that goal and committing to it, yeah. committing to it. I mean, even being married, you know, yeah. just being being committed to being married, like no matter what, no matter how how hard it is, like surrendering to the pro. No matter what, you know, I'm gonna do this or you know, like that that commitment when you get married. Yeah. To death do your part, like. But but really, it's easy to say that, but then when it comes to whatever. Yeah. Really like having that, that, that doing it, you know, doing it. But, the, but again, that's, that's that point. I think in my situation, because we're in different ones, right. Um, right. the better choice was to not be married. No, no, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So, th- so then you get, yeah, so that's that the struggle, that a, right? That was a bad example. Well, but, 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 that, but that's <laughs> a struggle because for everyone, it's a different answer. Sure, sure, sure. So you have to find what. It is for you, and I think, I don't know if that comes with experience. I don't know if it gets easier, but I think you start to listen more, maybe through experience, and I don't know sure. if a younger person, you know, who's 10, 12, 15, can do that, or maybe by the time you're 25. I'm not sure if that's something that we get with experience and age, that is it something we can Age is a number, right? It's get about earlier? The, about the experiences. But is it something a younger person can get clearer on? Are there ways to get clear on how to make those, how how to listen? I mean, you know, I think we I... We talk about the gut instinct, right? Yeah, and I and think so I... The brain, we think the brain, and how, how does that work, the gut and then, instinct? And then sometimes it's this battle, right? Like your common sense versus what that is. and. But who's the, who's, right, who's... And while we're, while we're talking right. about it, you know, I went to art school, like that wasn't the choice that was necessarily um didn't your parents didn't your parents want you to be like a doctor or a doctor a lawyer a business person right you know my parents are chinese 
Right. But they were also... <laughs> Asian. Um, <laughs> I did start piano at three and violin at four, and I have no musical talent after many years of struggling. You know, that's the one where it's like, you should have given it up, right? You shouldn't have been fighting no that way, battle. Man. But but, um, but I think, I, you, you know, there are times where I have listened to it, right? And so then I, I think in the last, what, 10, 15 years, then, then you go back to the times where I go, okay, go back to what you were listening to, which is what got me back to art. Right, go back to a time where it wasn't necessarily the most um, sensible mm. choice, but you listen, and then it becomes that thing of looking, what's giving me that feeling, yeah, or where, where, and using that as the directional now. So let's talk about your art. Well, I graduated with a master's in fine art in 1993 and never made art again. <laughs> <laughs> what year was that? 2000? Ni 1993. 1993 you graduated. I graduated with a master's degree and I stopped making art. It wasn't okay. a very good experience. Okay. And 2015, mm. 16, I came back to making art and combining it with jujitsu. So, uh, you know, it was what you were saying. As I, I was sick with the fatigue and I was trying uh, to change the things and I had to get rid of so many of the stresses and I think that was really key when you mentioned that it was like cutting out whether it's people situations choices all those things that bring you to that stressed inflamed state of tension and that's where I see that physically right or feel that physically or in different ways um, so you start cutting those things out and and I tried to get back to the things that make me happy. And it took me that long to be away from the art to come back to it, change my diet back to what it was before, and actually more. So I used to be a vegetarian for many years, and the year I got sick, I started eating meat. You know, I think that was part of the stress on my body, actually. Uh, so I... Uh, You're vegetarian again? Well, I ended up being vegan. Mm. I, 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 I said, I'm going to, you know, I made, went back to making art. And then I said, well, let me see what I did when I felt really good. And it was not eating meat was one of the things that stood out in my mind. And so I stopped eating meat. And then, you know, I ate dairy and seafood at the time when I was younger. And then I started being vegetarian again. And then I just kind of thought, well, why don't I just try doing vegan and cut out the dairy and the other things and I did that for about three weeks and I thought oh, I can do this although I, I, I think right now I I've been vegan for at least three years um, and I would eat meat maybe two or three times a year but I I'm thinking about eating meat a little occasionally I think they call it a flexitarian <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think for the most part I'll probably be vegan organic as much as possible and occasionally have some meat once in a while yeah, so you started doing art at Realize it yeah. fulfilled so, you. Yeah, I got to bring them both together. Balanced. Um, yeah, and then things. And, and every so often I look down and I get that panic feeling and um, it hasn't Start been it, it hasn't again. been a a, a good business decision. But I try to just look past that and keep following it because that's the that's the the battle right between the sensible head and and the life. So, so I battle that, um, but I keep trying to make more work and I'm working on, uh, making, do, doing the interior of my house, right? So I'm going to do the stairs, like all the skills, all the things that I've been working with the materials and all the things I've been working with my art. Now I'm going to start doing parts of my house and I'm going to make all the furniture or a lot of the furniture. Uh, and maybe I'll start doing things for houses commercially. or We'll, we'll see where it takes me. But we have one life. And, uh, Why not do things that we love to do? What are you going to do? You know, keep following. And uh, hope we don't fall off the tightrope. <laughs> just don't look down, right? And you just keep... There's always this, um, it makes sense after when you look back, right? You look back on the crazy decisions and it's like, oh, well, that took me here and that took me here and this all makes sense. And 
now it makes sense. So then you have to go, okay, just keep, keep going. I don't know. It gets scary. I can only imagine with a family it gets scary, but look with, what, with what, with having a family to be responsible to, you have kids and, and, and a wife, but it's all bloomed into you know, this you, amazing thing. Right. And that's a, that's a thing. Like it happens following my, my, my heart, following my, you know, whatever this, my instinct This as they say. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, just things keep growing. I cut away all the stuff that stresses me out. Yeah. And uh, we're all about, you know, helping people be their best here and ha- creating that culture. And, and uh, yeah, any, I kind of nip it in the bud if there's some kind of negativity or nonsense, you know, just to protect the, the culture of the school. And I don't know, it seems to be working out. It yeah. keeps working out. And your whole family is connected and mm-hmm. it's amazing. Well, my wife does the flow. She does the you know, tag fit. She, she does, does the, the taxes. She does <laughs> and, the ta- and the taxes, you know. <laughs> And uh, and uh, she runs the Asai Jungle Cafe, yeah. which is all you know. It's, everything's interconnected, so. Yeah, but so it's all right, right? So it all makes sense, and it doesn't bring stress, you know. And when, when it's not the not right the things. stress, but just how to recover from the stress, right? No, but I'm saying that you have a whole support, like right, right, it, right, right. It, but the it, stress, it, the it's stress, all part of it. I mean, stress, like you know, like like Scott says, Scott Son, you know, you, you know, it's like you need stress, but too much stress is not good, right? Yes. So when we train, for example. 60 80% of your heart rate max, you know, stress is good, but too much stress is not good, right? Yes. And so we need the stress to kind of be able to focus and, and to grow this, you know, and to grow. Exactly. So it's always managing that stress, managing that stress, being able to upshift and downshift. Yeah. To keep your health and keep your homeostasis. It, it's so, so funny. You keep going it, it, and like all day long, every day, you know, seven days a week. It, it seems like we need a meter, like a speedometer. Yeah. And then I'm the sure other it's part. coming. I'm sure but, it's but coming. But the other part of me, well, that's artificial the, 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 the Apple Watch. <laughs> yeah. But the other part of me is that we do. We just haven't been listening to it. Right. 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 We've gotten so disconnected from it. Right. And slowly, and maybe that technology helps us reconnect to those things. Man, like the you know the heart rate monitors, like Scott says, like they're like two beats behind. You know, so you can have technology, but it's like it's having that body awareness like the t- yeah. technology is messing us up right the gps is like instead of having to figure out where we're at we're like constantly looking out at the gps and so you kind of use you lose right yeah. if you don't use it you lose it so man learn how to take your heart rate count yeah. the beats yeah be connected within yourself and then i think everything gets better well it's funny some people you know you have your gps you have your map and you're following it and it takes you to where place. And sometimes I think that's wrong, right? And you kind of catch the mistake where there are people that right. will follow it no and not what. use right. their common sense. You're like, no, I've been there a million times. This right. way's faster. Right. Because I it's turn not off perfect. if I can. You know, some places you can't, right? You yeah. need like the GPS. But overall, if I can, I try to turn it off just yeah. to, you know, practice. Yeah. <laughs> but and even when you have there, it's like you can still override it, right? right You're right, not bound right, to it. Right, right. So then when you go, well, that doesn't make sense. And, and then sometimes you get kind of screwed because you're, you're like, well, I c- it looks like I can go down this street. And then you, you find out later it's a one way. Right. And you go, oh, the GPS was right. But, you know, you got to have a balance and listen to your own self and have technology help you as opposed to be reliant completely right. on it, right? Right. Maybe that's what's going on with all the immune uh, immune uh, diseases that w- that's going on in society. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm. Pr- it's probably a part. Right? Although I did see uh, the new Terminator movie last night. <laughs> Augmentation, augmented super superpowers. That's uh, okay. Superhumans. Okay, I got to check it out now. Yeah. Art, art, uh, it was a Skynet. Skynet is uh we went to SpaceX and they have a Skynet uh Oh, I'm not going to spoil it for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll make sure I check it out. <laughs> 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 I love that stuff. Uh, I think it's coming. It's here. It's here. Oh my it's gosh. Here. Well, we're already p- almost at Terminator 1, you know, the first movie. We're almost at Judgment Day, right? Like where's is Alexa listening to? <laughs> like they know everything so it's not too far off that the computers are gonna i i, I look launch at all missiles. i look at all those artificial intelligent things things and uh and you know, like it makes me kind of sad right Cause it makes you feel like less important but then uh yeah i mean it's coming it's coming it's so not, uh, just be a good person right be be human be 
do nice things, right? Yeah. Just do the best you can. Uh, but and and I think with technology, I think just being aware, mm-hmm. right? I think so many people are not aware they're, so they're they become a slave to the technology, right? Mm-hmm. And they think that's the only thing. It's like, no, you can do it this way too. And so I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm on my, I'm connected through my phone to a lot of stuff, but then you know you unplug sometimes, or you go, oh, I can do it another way. Uh, y- you know, people can't make change at the cash register without the machine telling them what number to give back. Yeah. Interesting world we but live in. Then we start losing, right? How do people find you, Felicia? How do they find your art? Um, How do they find you on the mat? Sometimes we have you. We've had you out for a seminar. So yeah, legacy, right? yeah. Um, well, I don't keep up on my website, but you know, usually Instagram, Felicia O. Um, my art is F L A U. Uh, art of Felicia O. Art but if you, if you put my name in, they'll both come up. You, you can watch my art or. So the, it, before we we break, yeah. uh, what flow F L A. You. Okay, so my initials, my name is Felicia Linda O, F L O, Flow, um, Flow State. So yes, kind of right there. And uh, so it, it's spelled F L A U, and so people tend to say Flow, but I say Cafe O Lay, not Cafe Au Lay. So the A U can be the O, as in Faux, uh, Faux Finish. Uh, and it's an acronym for for love, art, utility, and it was kind of going back to the art and cool for the love of it. That's it. Just keep following for the following love that of it. path, you know. Good. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you. Thank you.